This video is sponsored by Professional Photographers of America. Don't make this mistake if you're looking for a 20 millimeter prime lens for your Sony camera. One of these lenses is really good and the other is kinda meh. That was a sequence shot with both these lenses on the Sony Alpha 7 IV. We've got the Sigma 20 millimeter F2 and the Sony 20 millimeter F1.8. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. Now while both lenses perform great on their own, when I was comparing video footage and photos side by side, the Sony lens tended to outperform the Sigma lens almost 100% of the time. We're gonna take a closer look at the photos and video shot with both these lenses, but if you want, you can actually download the photos and videos for free so that you can see for yourself. You're welcome. But first, let's go ahead and compare the actual exterior build of both these lenses. Okay, so first of all, they are, well, they they feel nearly identical. I mean, if I had to pick one, I'd say that the, that the Sigma 20 millimeter F2 is the better build. It just, it just feels better. It honestly feels like an art lens. Like I know it's a contemporary lens, but it does feel like an art lens. The the Sony 20 millimeter G lens, well, it feels like a G lens. It's not necessarily one of the, the cheaper Sony lenses and it's definitely not the, the G Master version, but the G lenses are somewhat in between. Both lenses are weather sealed and they, they kind of look almost exactly the same. I mean, the, the Sony one is a little bit longer. Uh, looks like, yeah, looks like the Sony is a little bit longer and as far as a uh, girth <laughs> the Sony lens is a little bit bigger than the Sigma the filter thread for the Sony lens is 67 millimeters and the filter thread for the Sigma is 62 all right so now let's go and take a look at the focus ring both are very smooth the Sony lens has a uh, has well has a better grip on the focus ring and it's very very smooth where the Sigma doesn't have much of a grip and it's also very smooth, but uh, but because there's not much of a grip with the Sigma lens, I don't know if I'd be able to, to pull focus smoothly if I were to shoot manually. And so if I were to give a winner to one of these lenses in terms of focus ring, I'd probably say that Sony has the better focus ring. Also, I have like really dry hands and I hate lotion. And so everything is just like slippery to me. Now looking at the aperture ring, both are a little bit different. The ridges on the aperture ring of the Sigma doesn't go all the way through. Like you see all the aperture values on the actual ring itself, where with the Sony, the aperture values are just below the the rigid area what do you call this is like like the the ridge grip of, of the ring I don't know but you know what I mean and when you change the aperture of the Sigma lens it's uh well you hear the clicky sounds unfortunately it's not declickable and so you kind of stuck with that uh, clickety sound if you want to change apertures where the Sony lens there is a declick switch so that you don't have to hear that clickety sound when you change apertures so here's the Sony lens with the clickety feature on now I'm gonna turn it off Smooth. So depending on how you feel about that, that's just the difference between the Sigma and the Sony lens when it comes to the aperture ring. Both lenses have a manual focus, autofocus switch, no surprise there, but it's the Sony lens that has the function button on the side, which you can assign whatever function you want to, and the Sigma does not. And so yeah, this is more of a, a bare bones kind of kind of lens, where the Sony lens has a couple more features that are actually kind of great. Oh, it's cold outside. All right. Let's go. Well, hold up. Wait. You wearing a jacket? Yeah. Are you wearing thermals? Yes. Everywhere? Yeah. And what about equipment insurance? 
You gotta take care of me, you know? Taken care of. PPA? PPA. PPA! PPA! Love how PPA supports its members by providing resources and tools to help them run profitable businesses. Don't forget about the contract templates to use with clients. Hard drive recovery services. And of course, equipment and camera gear insurance up to $15,000 or a flat deductible fee for equipment repairs or a $350 flat deductible for full replacement of equipment loss. PPA! PPA! It's too bad photographers aren't listening to our conversation because they should sign up right now. Like right now with the link in the description below where they can get $25 off their first year membership when they sign up. All right, ready to go? Whew, yeah, let's do it. Woo! PPA! Now, when comparing video footage shot with both lenses, they look fairly similar in terms of sharpness. But when you put them side by side, you can definitely tell there's a lot of distortion with the Sigma lens. Also a bit of discoloration. It's actually a lot more evident in the photo, so let's go ahead and take a look at the photos and compare. All right, so side by side is an image of the same tree. The image on the left was shot with the Sony lens and the image on the right was shot with the Sigma lens. Now in terms of sharpness, they're they're pretty similar. In fact, uh, the Sony is, uh, is a little bit sharper. If you look at the details over here on the tree bark, but the Sigma is uh, is actually pretty close. In terms of uh, bokeh, obviously you're gonna see a lot more bokeh with the Sony lens because it was shot at f1.8, where the Sigma was shot at f2. The colors on the image shot with the Sigma lens is also a little bit different. It's almost a little warmer. Even a little tint of magenta, yeah, just a bit. And I also made sure that the settings were exactly the same when I used both lenses on the Sony Alpha 7 IV. So I found it a little interesting that the colors were a little bit different with the Sigma lens. I mean, generally, speaking, Sigma lenses tend to produce better colors versus Sony lenses, but in this case, the image shot with a Sony lens looked a little more natural. All right, now moving on to the next example, the image on the left was shot with the Sigma lens and the image on the right was shot with the Sony lens. Now, even though both images look very similar, there is a lot of distortion or a lot of vignetting with the image shot with the Sigma lens. Like look at the corner over here and this corner over here and that corner, where with the image shot with the Sony lens, I shot at f1.8 and you should see more of a vignette because I am shooting at f1.8, but in this instance, not so much. The distortion and the vignetting is better controlled with the Sony lens, where the Sigma, not so much. I mean, obviously you could fix it in post, but these images were just taken straight out of the camera. In terms of sharpness, I mean, yeah, they're, they're both pretty much on par. And in this instance, the Sigma image looked a little bit sharper. But when it comes to distortion and vignetting, it's definitely a lot more severe with the Sigma lens. Now in the next example, you see the distortion a lot more. The image on the left was shot with a Sony lens and the image on the right was shot with the Sigma. Now look at these lines over here. Like it's, it's really bad. Where the image shot with the Sony lens, like it's very well controlled. Like the lines look pretty straight, but with the image shot with the Sigma lens, like man, that's, that's not good. <laughs> so definitely keep that in mind if you are considering getting the Sigma 20 millimeter F2. There is gonna be severe distortion when shooting full frame. Definitely not so much when you're in crop mode or using an APS-C camera body, but there definitely is a severe distortion. Now, with all that said, which lens is better? It's gotta be the Sony lens. I mean, I mean, both lenses perform great. They take sharp photos, they take great videos. It's just that the Sony lens takes sharper photos. It performs better for video in terms of autofocus. And distortion, there's no distortion with the Sony 20 millimeter F1.8. I mean, there is a little bit, but there is severe distortion with the Sigma 20 millimeter F2. Like it's, it's pretty bad. And when I was filming my first impressions video with the Sigma 20 millimeter F2, I was mostly filming in 4K 60 with the Sony Alpha 7 IV, totally forgetting that in 4K 60, you're not filming full frame. Therefore, all the images just looked really, really good. But when I started shooting in full frame, like I got to see the distortion, the vignetting, and it's it's pretty bad with the Sigma lens. Now, even though the Sigma 20 millimeter F2 is a little bit cheaper than the Sony 20 millimeter F1.8, I would say spending the extra $100 to get a lens that has an extra function button, a D-click switch, and better control for distortion is well worth it over a lens that does not.